wanted to we just wanted to uh, take this opportunity. Uh, we're trying to do this monthly where we can continue these virtual outreach sessions. They were very valuable last year, especially when we all came together during that pause and we unified as a uh, Minnesota community-based youth basketball community. And we got through that season, which was wonderful. Um, we had kind of a kickoff event in June. Um, and now we are motoring our way uh, through um, some updates here, but I first wanted to um, take an opportunity to um, have one of our partners speak and he will be extremely valuable for all of your associations as well. Um, you probably recognize Sean Jensen. Um, Sean uh, was big into the National Football League for 16 years and he covered yeah. two Olympics and Recently, um, I'm just, I'm he has been an call. author, I'm speaker, I'm just, no, no, no. Uh, but just if I don't, I might, I'm going to start listening to this. Please pause your, your um, I just put him in. No, I just, yeah. Please pause your device if you can. I know that we can as well, but, um, but Sean is here to kind of speak about some, uh, a specific topic that I know that we're all facing, um, uh, the impacts of social media on sports and how it affects what we need to do as ambassadors of youth sports. Um, this is just something that he just wants to touch on. He obviously has a, a, a deep presentation on this, but this is uh, just kind of a little snippet for you. And this is just another um, value add for all MYBA member associations that for you to know that Sean Jensen uh, is available to all of you um, and he can work with all of you we're trying to establish how we can make it work for quadrants within the metro and even establishing stuff in greater Minnesota that we can get a lot of different associations together um, for Sean to share his wealth of knowledge. So, Sean, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. You know, first of all, I, I'm just, you know, have gotten to know Dawson over the years and just really grateful for you know, his leadership and his ability to, you know, just uh, sort of bring me in and, and give me opportunities. You know, I think uh, the, the first thing I want to tell you guys uh, who are on this call, like I've, I've served as obviously I'm a parent. I've got two children. My son Elijah is 13. My daughter Zara is 10. Um, but, you know, I've served as a board member, which I'm currently on a youth sports board. Uh, I've served as a longtime coach. You know, I've been that parent in the stands. And so I really, really appreciate the sacrifices you guys, you know, are making because um, it, it's, I, I know that most of us get into this because we're trying to create uh, a great atmosphere for our children, you know, to, to enjoy this, this wonderful thing that is basketball in this case, but, but just youth sports in general. Um, the thing that I wanted to just share for a, a little bit on is I've had a chance to speak at over 300 plus schools. Um, I really am passionate about communicating with kids about character traits. You know, I think it's so important that we utilize sports to help teach our kids, using it as, a, as an opportunity to teach them what it means to develop the characteristics that are gonna help them to be successful in life, not only in sport, but also in life. You know, and so I've got the Middle School Rules book series where I've had a chance to work with professional athletes. Uh, most recently, uh, Thomas Morstead, uh, Vontae Davis, uh, Brian Urlacher in the past, uh, Charles, uh, Jamal Charles, Charles Tillman. And then I've also got a video series called Model Student Athlete, which we've shared a little bit with MYSA, um, just in regards to the, the character traits through my videos. But the one area that Dawson wanted me to speak on today was just on social media. And so I've got a presentation that I've been able to do to some local schools, some schools abroad via, via Zoom. Uh, Minneapolis North High School has experienced it a few times. But I've got a presentation titled In Your Hands, How You Can Use Social Media and Not Let Social Media Use You. And I just think it's so important that for a lot of you guys who are parents or just as, as adults who are steward to children, I think one of the things that really is hard for me to hear is when a young person makes some kind of mistake, and we can know what some of those mistakes are, but then they say, no one ever told me, right? No one ever told me about you know uh how how to have a relationship uh you know with with somebody of the other sex or no one ever told me about the dangers of 
you know, alcohol or drugs or things. And, and I think social media is one of those things that we have to be very clear with kids because they lack the perspective, right? I mean, that's, that's what children are inherently going to lack perspective. They haven't lived long enough to experience things. But I can tell you that when I was a young person, thank goodness Instagram did not exist. Thank goodness that, you know, people were not Facebook living some of the things that I was involved in, right? And, and I was fortunate. You know, it's just, it's a timing thing, right? We were fortunate not to sort of have that. But that's a reality for our children now. And there are just too many examples of young people who are making mistakes on social media that just live with them for a very, very long time. And so I think it's really important for us to sort of share with the students you know, what are some of the things, what, what can we use social media for? What can we not use it for? And so I really just kind of spell it out and I provide lots of examples. I mean, that's what I do with model student athlete is whether we're talking about being grateful, whether we're talking about working hard, you know, it's really important to spell out for our young people what that looks like and to give them tangible examples that they can look at not only now, but into the future. And so that's something that I really am passionate about. I really think it's important that, um, you know, many of our young athletes, some sort of beyond the, the, the age limit, right? I mean, there are age limits for things like Instagram, but I don't know how many 10 and 11 year olds that I know who already have some of those accounts, you know, TikTok, you know, Snapchat, all those things. And so I think it's really important that we communicate to kids. What are ways? What is this for? How can we use it? And what are things that we need to be mindful of? Because a simple mistake can be something that really does change their life. Um, Dawson, is there anything else? I, I wasn't sure if somebody had any questions for me or anything, but I just wanted to sort of you know, outline that. Um, I know you guys have a lot going on in this meeting. So Dawson had told me to try to keep it under 10 minutes. <laughs> well, I just, I guess I wanted you to kind of talk about, you know, some of the things through your platform that you could um, provide to the MYBA associations. Um, maybe yeah. share that. Yeah, I mean, you know, for MYBA, I mean, the, the big thing for me is, in my different uh, training sessions with model student athlete, I, I do have one basketball player that I've worked with, uh, Skylar Diggins Smith. Um, so one of my books was with her. But in my uh, model student athlete training sessions, you know, again, things like, you know, being grateful, how to be coachable, you know, how to, um, you know, how to deal with adversity. I mean, just different character traits that we want to instill in kids. I use a lot of basketball examples. And I think it's so important for for kids not only to tell them, but we have to show them. And so I utilize examples of athletes like Kevin Durant. Obviously, Skylar Diggins is an example, but I use lots of basketball examples that uh, of people that they're familiar with to show them what these different traits can look like. You know, Kobe Bryant, for instance, is, is in the one that's about work ethic because Kobe Bryant had an incredible work ethic. And so that that is an example that, that I do utilize. So, um, you know, I think, one of the things that I've kind of learned uh, from people like Dawson is that I think that we all have different sort of strengths and gifts. And I think that given my background, I really have been able to uh, learn how to communicate in a way that kids not only understand, but that they're able to keep, you know, so utilizing my experience as a storyteller to find the right stories and to be able to, to, to sort of provide that for them in a way that they can um, not only understand, but then hopefully remember. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll open it up. Does anybody have a question for Sean? Okay, so what we'll do is we will follow up and provide additional information on um, some of the things that Sean can share with your, your association, but more importantly, we will let all of you know what um, options will become available, um, getting a, a number of associations together in different quadrants or different areas that we can um, utilize Sean's um, knowledge uh, and, and share that to the everybody that's participating inside your association. So Sean, thanks for joining tonight, appreciate it. Thank you guys, look forward to connecting with some of you. 
All right. So moving on, uh, we just wanted to also uh, pass along. Uh, we're excited as an organization to partner with the U.S. Council for Athletes Health. Um, you may be familiar with them. Um, Dr. Craig Perry, over uh, the course of last season, was extremely instrumental in, in helping us create the Return to Participation Manual. Um, Dr. Craig Perry used to, uh, was previously um, a member of the Minnesota State High School League, and he uh, had a great opportunity with the U.S. Council for Athletes Health, and he is now full-time as their vice president. And we are so excited to have Dr. Jim Borchers on and, and Dr. Craig Perry. Um, Dr. Jim is has been with Ohio State University for a number of years, and um, I'll let him kind of share his background a little bit, but they just wanted to talk about their partnership, and they're excited to let all of you know uh, something that as an MYBA member that you are going to be able to utilize for all of your participants inside your association. So Dr. Jim, uh, the show is yours. Thanks Dawson, thank you so much. And uh, your organization at the MYAS, uh, as you know, um, uh, and to everyone here, good evening. Um, uh, we're so proud to be partners with uh, the MYAS and also with the MYBA to be able to make certain that we um, promote athlete health and safety as a priority. And we know that starting in youth sport, uh, that there's nothing more important than the health of sa and safety and development of athletes. Um, that's been very well uh, established with our current partners. Uh, we have partners uh, uh, like the Pac-12 Conference, uh, the NAIA, uh, no, numerous conferences within the NCAA um, have worked with professional, amateur, collegiate uh, uh, sport organizations to help them with athletic health care and safety. But we know that establishing uh, those uh, traits at a youth level is so important. And we're so uh, happy to know that uh, you know, Dawson, uh, the MYAS, their organization and the MYBA are, uh, are going to take on uh, uh, this uh, journey with us as we try to provide um, resources and solutions for your association. Um, quite honestly, our council is made up of, uh, of healthcare professionals, uh, athletics professionals with over 300 plus total years of experience at all levels of, uh, of sport. In working on athletic health care, safety, and wellness uh, programming. And that's our goal. Our goal is to enhance what you can provide to your, uh, uh, to your association through your alliance. And in uh, discussions with Dawson and his group, um, we are going to build programming that will do that through a number of uh, opportunities. We plan to do that through consultation and through uh, live uh, opportunities, uh, opportune webinars on timely topics, uh, and making certain that uh, we're able to reach out to the association and the alliance and bring experts to you uh, to talk about topics that are important to you. Um, things like mental health, uh, wellness for youth athletes, things like youth athlete development uh, and health and safety, things like um, important coach issues around health and safety. We also have a unique platform, Athletics Health Space, uh, which we're going to work uh, with uh, uh, the MYAS uh, to develop the, the trusted health platform, which the MYBA will have an opportunity to use and we have uh, are developing and, and will have ready for you uh, a module that will address a number of very important uh, youth sport topics, um, things like bullying and hazing, mental health and uh, youth sport, um, overuse injuries in youth sport, what to watch for, how to prevent those, um, recovery things, uh, things that are important like sleep, nutrition, hydration, um, appropriate periodization of activity levels, um, things that will really, I think, enhance uh, what your association is interested in and help develop culture around uh, health and safety. And I think most of all, we're excited to have our experts work with your experts and being able to provide this programming. And so through that, our partnership will help to, we hope, add value not only to your coaches and officials uh, throughout your associations, but to all your participants as well and be a resource for you as, uh, as we move forward. So 
we're just extremely excited about the journey. Um, we were extremely honored last year to be able to work with uh, your alliance, uh, work with uh, the MYAS and helping navigate um, maybe the most complicated sports uh, um, uh, uh, season ever with COVID-19. Um, but we know that the future is bright and for youth athletes, uh, the future is bright. And so we are excited about this partnership and, uh, and know that it will add value to your membership. We know that we can bring to you, um, you know, customizable programming uh, that your members, uh, we hope will find uh, um, enjoyable, enriching, uh, and make the experience better for everyone in your, uh, in your association. And so um, Dawson, again, thank you for the opportunity. I know you have a lot of things to get to, but we're really excited to roll this out and really looking forward uh, to working with the MYAS and the uh, Minnesota Youth Basketball Alliance uh, moving into this next year. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Jim. And please understand everybody that uh, because of the partnership that the MYAS has with the council, it unlocks a lot of things for all of you. Um, and I'm, we're not just saying that you have to just buy them. They're going to be made available for you. Um, there are other things that you will see as this course that's been developed that will show you what they have and, and all the, the, the great um, uh, information they can provide everybody that's participating inside your association. There will be other um, additional um, paid options that'll be through trusted coaches and that'll be the trusted health platform. I know a lot of the organizations on this call utilize trusted coaches, which is our educational division as an organization. But again, we feel it's extremely important through the partnership that we focus on the health, safety, and well-being of everyone participating. And that, that is, I, I, number one, the, the youth athletes, but also everybody else that makes the youth sports go round, which is the official, the coach, the parent, and all of you as the, the leaders of the association. So we're really excited about this partnership, and you will, you will see probably within the next um, – I would say 30 days, Dr. Jim, that there will be a, a course course that will be made available to all of you to pass along to everybody participating inside your organization. Yeah, absolutely, Dawson. We're really excited to get that rolled out and looking forward to doing that, uh, as you mentioned, uh, within the next month. Yep. And I mean, one other thing to add, through the expertise with you know, Dr. Craig Perry and, and the other staff um, that they have at the council, you know, they're going to assist us in ensuring compliance of different various or of, of various things, including player eligibility and things of that nature. So um, we're just excited to have that neutral body to assist us in stuff like that. So, Dr. Jim, thanks for being on. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much and looking forward to getting to know everyone better. And uh, we're excited again about this partnership. Dawson, thank you again. Yep. Thank you. All right, moving on. So, uh, you know, it, it's great to see again, 70 people that, that were registered and I don't know what we're up to for our numbers right now um, that are on the call, but that represents a lot of associations, not only in the Metro, but around the state. And I think that's the one thing that we want everybody to understand that this is for the associations by the associations. We have a board of advisors that's put in place. We have a steering committee that we've met with once and that we're going to meet with again, we want your feedback because we want this to be the best possible experience for every association that is participating in the winter community-based season. And so um, we, I think the thing that we wanted to pass along too is, you know, when we're passing along surveys, it's not just for um, us to do, just gain information. We want to have the information in order to enhance everything that's hap happening inside winter community-based youth basketball. And, and I think that as us as the facilitators and us that it, we're, are steering the ship, we want to be able to do that. We're not gaining the information to be the dictators to tell you all what to do. This is a collective effort and that's what, how we want it to happen. So I, I just put up their COVID protocols. I know that a lot of you understand this from the end of the spring summer season that a lot of that stuff went away. Um, we are very hopeful that we won't even have to worry about that. That will be all um, hopefully 
hopefully we don't have to worry about hearing about the Delta um, variant very much longer. Um, but I would continue to work with your schools, your facilities, and, and just make sure that you are on the same page with them as you move into the season. I mean, the other note, as you all know, I'm sure that at the end of the um, spring season, the mass went away as well. But again, we need to all do our part and hopefully we can have a very normal season this coming uh, winter community-based season. All right, uh, the, we're gonna get into some reminders and updates re related to the Minnesota Youth Basketball Alliance. Um, I'm gonna have Jeremy Innes, the Associate Director at MYS, who's been a big part of getting uh, the portal and all the benefits uh, connected for all the associations that are a part of the MYBA. Um, and I'll, Jeremy, are you on? Yep. Okay, so Jeremy, uh, go ahead. All right, thanks Dawson. And just a reminder, I'm pretty sure everybody's aware of it, but when we're referring to the MYBA portal, uh, we're talking about the back end of the MYS website. Um, when you log in, if you're attached to the MYBA portal, um, that's where you can view all the team accounts, the tournament index, uh, the rosters, um, where we ask you to put your board members, um, all that good stuff there. Um, so just uh, as Dawson mentioned, some, some updates and reminders. Um, as I got on this slide here, team identification is the most important part of this process. And when we're talking about team identification, basically it's the team names. Um, and we've got a formula that we want everybody to follow with that, uh, where it's got the association name, gender initial, grade, and then a unique identifier, which could be a color, coach's last name, or a number. Um, you know, a lot of people ask, can we use ABC? Uh, you're definitely welcome to, um, but we would encourage that only in situations where that team, if you list them as an A team, for example, if they're going to be playing in A tournament tournaments throughout the entire season. What gets tricky with trying to track results is that uh, you might list them as an A team, but they might be playing down in a B tournament for a weekend, um, and that can throw everybody off. Um, and actually, when you when you uh, register your teams or when you add your teams in the MYBA portal, it'll walk you right through that. Um, naming structure. Um, and it's also very important when you're registering for tournaments, if you're the person with your association that uh, signs up all your teams for different tournaments, or if you're accepting teams into your tournament, we want to make sure everybody's using uh, the, the properly identified team names. Uh, we're going to put some things out there that are going to help you with that. Um, just so when the tournament director is adding teams into their tournament, they can select the proper team. Once the proper team is selected uh, and the games are played, then those results will accurately be transferred over to the Trusted Rankings platform. Uh, if we go to our next slide, um, we did just launch the membership renewal about a week ago, and you can access that by logging into the MYBA portal. The membership fee for this year is $100. Uh, we did away with the per team fee. It's just a flat fee of $100. We set that as low as we possibly could. Um, basically, it's to cover some of our um, technical enhancements for some functionality within the MYBA portal. Um, once you renew your membership, you'll be able to access tournament index and other tabs inside the portal. Regarding portal access, um, association admins have access to the portal. There's anywhere from one person uh, from a couple associations. Some associations have as many as 12 people that have access to the MYBA portal for their association. Anybody who has access can grant other users access. And you must have a user account on the MYAS website. Um, once you have an account, give your email address to one of the other association admins and they can uh, attach your email address to their account. And then when you log in, you will um, automatically uh, be brought into the MYBA portal so you can access everything. Um, there has been some confusion about board members. Um, 
you know, because we also ask, you know, so we can communicate to uh, the proper people with each association. Uh, we ask the associations to enter their board members. Um, just by uh, entering your board members um, under the board member tab, that does not automatically give them access to the MYBA portal. We have to get that uh, user account attached for them to have access. Yeah, just a note on that. There's been a number of people recently that when a, a correspondence has been sent out that we're receiving emails stating I'm no longer with the association or I'm no longer in this role. So I, it's, it's very important that um, the president, director, board member, that if you're on this call this evening, that if there's anybody that's listed in your portal that is no longer a part of your association or they've moved on, their terms en ended, that we encourage you to make sure to get an updated uh, individual into that. So we can, again, the key to all of this is the communication and connectivity, getting uh, as many people to understand and know what's going on through the MYBA, through youth basketball in general, so that we're all on the same page. Thanks for the note, Das. If you want to go to the next slide, please. The tournament index. Uh, we've already got quite a few tournaments that are uh, listed on our tournament index. If you haven't uh, renewed your membership, you won't be able to access the tournament index um, as far as loading your tournament um, until you renew your membership and pay that $100 fee. Um, we encourage you to get your tournament listed up there as soon as possible. That tournament index page is one of the most viewed pages of our entire website. Um, so it's definitely a good spot to get your tournament information up. Uh, that uh, service or that uh, being able to advertise your tournament on the index is free to all MYBA members. Um, and as you're all aware of, one of the hot uh, topics for this season is the daily admission versus the no gate fee. Um, and there's a spot right on the, the initial view of that tournament index where you can see uh, which tournaments are going to be charging a daily admission and which tournaments aren't. And at this point, there are way more tournaments that are not charging a daily admission that have gone to the no gate fee model um, versus the ones that are, are going to charge a daily admission. So uh, it's a great spot to see all that information, um, get contact information for tournaments. Um, like I said, highly recommend getting your tournament up there as soon as possible. Yeah, one other thing to note that, um, you know, previously or in, in 2019 and prior to that, um, it was $75 per tournament to list it. So we again have wrapped that into this membership as a free service for all of your uh, association, your, your association to be able to promote your tournament. I know a lot of your, a lot of you um, have done such a great job with your tournaments that you probably don't need to promote it much and it's probably already filled, but there's a lot of other ones that they rely on that tournament index. So um and, and as Jeremy said, a lot of people have already done that, but we encourage anybody that has not to make sure to get that, uh, that updated and, and get your tournament listed to make sure that you can fill your tournament as well. All right, the, the MYBA bracketing platform. Um, this is the bracketing platform that we are encouraging all associations to utilize for this year. Um, you can access it right through the MYBA portal. Um, we've already got some pieces um, launched at this point, but by the end of this month, we should have everything ready to go. Um, we're going to make it very user friendly. Um, you know, we're very we're very familiar with a lot of the different platforms out there. Um, have used them, seen them. Um, we know where some of those pain points are with each of them, and and with ours, we're making sure that we make that. Uh, process as, as easy as possible for the user. The really nice thing about the MYBA bracketing platform is that it's going to allow us to um, keep that team identification consistent because um, all the teams that the different association admins enter uh, into the portal, um, those are going to feed the pool of teams that the tournament directors can select um, when they're filling out their divisions for their tournament. We will be able to add 
other teams um, that aren't uh, a member association. Um, and that's up to each association on whether they wanna take teams from associations that aren't a member of the MYBA. Um, so we can get those added in there if you need to. And just a note on that, last year we had well over 150 associations join the MYBA, uh, uh, join the MYBA. And a lot of the ones that didn't were the associations that didn't even form teams last year. Um, so we're very confident that we're gonna even exceed that 150 number this year. Um, and, and really our goal is to get every association, every community in the state of Minnesota um, to, to become a member. Um, to get everybody on the same page, just with best practices and um, you know, different policies, different procedures. Um, that's our plan. If quick, quick question, I don't mean yeah. to be dumb, but what is the bracketing platform? Like, what is it? It is basic. Core. Sure, that's that's a good question. Thank you for asking that. That's where, if you're running a tournament, if your association is having a tournament, that's where you can go in, load the team, select the bracket type. Uh, you can get a grid that you can copy and paste onto your website, uh, print off score sheets for each game, or sign in sheets, um, update scores online, all that good stuff. Um, and we price that at a dollar per team, which is um, less expensive than, than any other platform that, that I'm aware of. Um, and uh, Matt asked a question, does this replace Tourney Machine? Last year, Tourney Machine was the bracketing platform that we encouraged everybody to use. Uh, that's a good platform, but there's some things that we weren't able to connect. Um, you know, now that we had to, uh, you know, take the teams that were registered or entered into the MYBA portal, manually load those in to the uh, Tourney Machine platform. Um, so there's a little bit of lag on that. And and sometimes some inaccuracies. Uh, also this year with the trusted rankings, um, we were unable to set up a rankings uh, page, I guess you could say, uh, through the Tourney Machine website. Um, and now this year we'll be able to get a, a, a really nice trusted rankings um, uh, platform or page set up through our website. Um, so we won't have to uh, export or or take information from one platform and, and dump it into another. So I, I'll, I'll just note, we, we are not um, mandating that you need to use this MYBA bracketing platform. It is something that we internally as, have developed for the last two decades um, with all of our programming that we do as MYS. But if you feel strongly about another bracketing platform to uh, administer your tournament through, that is fine. I think just the main commitment is that we um, are we're going to work with um, making sure that we can get uh, an import or whatever it may be of all the the uh, properly identified teams, so those can be used inside your tournament. And then the other piece of it, making sure that we can easily export and get the results, because that's the key to it, is making sure that the results are there. Um, so everything is accurate and there is a true body of work for each team. Um, just as a general rule of thumb, um, maybe if you determine that you want to seed your tournament and you want to look at the trusted rankings to see where somebody sits and what their win loss record is. And ultimately for our grade state basketball championships. So we can even creep closer to the, um, the, the desire of not having any kind of seeding where it just ultimately happens. Now we know that there will still be some type of seeding, but I think that's the whole um, point of this bracketing platform is through the, the rosters that are imported, the teams that are properly identified through the MYBA portal, all of that will become available to your tournament director to properly select the correct team to go into your tournament. And uh, Jamie asked a question in the chat. Um, yes, we, we fully intend to do the seeding for the state tournament next year online. The, the trusted rankings is gonna be a big part of that, um, primarily as a starting point. Um, the plan right now is to then allow the coaches within those divisions um, 
you know, rank a portion of those teams. Uh, from our end, we most likely won't uh, necessarily break up each division, um, but we are going to use that trusted rankings platform um, to help us get teams, you know, closer to the right spot. Um, and then we will allow the coaches to uh, view information and, and rank the teams uh, just like we did this past season. And to reiterate what Dawson said, you know, we, we realize a lot of, you know, different people have used different platforms and they like them. You're, you're definitely welcome to keep doing that. Uh, from our standpoint, we would love to see you come over and use the MYBA bracketing platform, as Dawson mentioned, just so that, because that information, that, that win-loss data is already there and it's accurate. So that'll feed our rankings platform. As Dawson mentioned, we are working on a way to uh, allow tournament directors who don't use the MYBA bracketing platform uh, to get that information over into our uh, ranking system. But the big issue there is team identification. As I mentioned on the first slide, team identification is the most important piece of all this. So if you use a different platform, uh, a turning machine, for example, uh, when you're setting up your brackets, please make sure you get the correct naming structure um, from the associations that are uh, signing teams up for your tournament. Uh, I mentioned trusted rankings and the and the data. Um, the trusted assigners, I'll let Dawson touch on that in a moment. Um, but one of the things we're, we're planning on doing this year too is uh, posting, sharing some, some rules templates. That way, you know, it, we hear it from the officials, we hear it from the coaches about, you know, going to this tournament and they had this rule for uh, pressing for this grade. And they go to another tournament and now uh, it's a different rule for pressing or they had to shoot free throws from a different distance or they had to use a different size ball. Um, so that's one of the things we're going to get up here sooner than later and get that out to people. You don't have to use it. If you want to use your own rules, go right ahead. Uh, but we would encourage you to take a look at this and, uh, you know, adopt some of these things for your tournament. And hopefully we can uh, create some consistency out there um, when it comes to the rules. Das, do you want to touch on trusted assigners? I'll touch on that in a few minutes. You want to answer some of the chat? Yep. Uh, what are we going to do? The, with seeding for the state tournament, uh, there is a question. What are we going to do with teams that uh, don't play any games throughout the season? Are they going to go in the top tier? The, our goal for our state tournament is to properly place every team within the entire division. There's some grades where we get a, 180 teams that sign up, you know, seventh grade boys, for example. Ideally, we want all of those teams properly ranked slash seeded one through 180. Um, just by putting them, you know, in that top tier, uh, you know, most likely that's not our plan. We're going to dig and find some information on them. Um, and, and this is part of the reason why uh, we do want every community, every association in the state of Minnesota to join the MYBA. It, it makes data like this um, you know, so much more reliable and, and accurate. And, and some of those teams, especially in outstate Minnesota, um, you know, your smaller communities, your rural communities, um, we even want them to join. So then they have some data in the system as well. If you do run a tournament, um, you know, in, in Southern Minnesota, anywhere outstate, um, we would really appreciate it if you could help, uh, if you've got a community that's going to sign up some teams for your tournament and they're currently not a member of the MYBA, just uh, say, hey, uh, you know, be a good idea to take a look at the MYBA, um, send them to our website, tell them to contact me or get me in contact with that group. And uh, we'd love to, to get them signed up. Uh, as Michelle, as, Michelle yeah, as far was talking as, about, um, sorry, Michelle was talking about pricing uh, that they had last year through turning machine. That's something that we can discuss again with turning machine. I don't know where their pricing is, um, but uh, we will look into that for you, Michelle, if you still want to utilize turning machine. Um, all right, here's moving on. Go ahead, Guinea. 
uh, trusted rankings, as I mentioned, accurate data. Um, and, and we are working on a, a solution to get scores from other bracketing platforms into our rankings. Um, I mentioned at the bottom of the page, page the playing rule templates. Um, Das, do you want to talk about the assigners now? Yeah, I, I guess we we uh, put a survey out um, about a month ago, and we would really encourage all of you um, to go into that survey, and I can resend it again, and share information about your assigner, uh, the, the rules. Um, that's one of the places that we're trying to gather as many of the rules as possible. So we uh, don't just think that what MYS puts out for the rules are what it should be. We want to we want to look into what you guys have. If there is a little bit differences, we want to take the best of everybody and and put this rule template together. Um, and we will we will lean on our advisors. We will lean on our uh, steering committee. And if anybody on this call or anybody within the MYBA has thoughts and opinions, we encourage you to reach out because if we don't hear from you, we don't know what you're thinking. Um, but the trusted assigners effort is a way for the assigners that work through the MYS and all of the assigners that work through youth basketball in the state of Minnesota to make sure that we have some consistency with training, screening, education, and we also have consistency in pay. Uh, recently, we released a six-year plan on pay, and we are going to provide that out to all MYBA member associations on what the pay is that uh, based on what type of game um, that we would be paying out over the course of the next six years. It's been agreed upon by all of our assigners, which many of the signers that in at least inside the Metro that you all work with are the same ones that we work with. And I think the other big thing is we uh, have, we have seen a, a sharp increase just because of the fear of not having officials that the pay is sometimes around $30 per game or exceeding that. And I think that we need to try to short, uh, solidify that and make sure that we all are doing the same thing regarding pay. Because if we continue to raise the price more and more, that means that it's gonna have to go somewhere and it's gonna all affect all of our entry fees. So we're hoping that through a consistent way of, of increasing um, the pay over time, kind of like what the high school league does through their, the associations that work with them, that they get, they know that over the course of a couple of years, they're going to get a pay increase. And that's the same kind of thing that we're developing here, that we want to make sure that that is a consistent way to uh, make things happen. So you may, uh, you may get an email from uh, Buddy Hemrick, who was our coordinator of officials for 26 years, and he's uh, in a consultant role with us right now, as well as Jeff Stottlemyer, um, just talking to you all as leaders on this concept and uh, if there's any additional inf information that you need about it. So look for more information. But again, I would encourage you to complete that survey that was uh, in previous emails for this invite. And, uh, uh, yep. Before we move on, one, uh, one more thing that I'll mention, um, and in our previous meeting, we mentioned this a lot, is that with all these things we're doing, especially within the MYBA portal and a lot of the other uh, pieces, but we are just trying to offer solutions. Um, it'd be great if, if, if you take advantage of the uh, op options that we've made available, but by no means are we saying that, that you have to. If you've got a different um, provider or, or service that you can use, that's, that's fine. Um, but what we're trying to do is, is identify those pain points with our surveys, advisory committee, steering committee, and, and help find solutions to those. Um, and as we mentioned in one of the previous slides too, that we want to hear your feedback. Uh, if there's something that you would like to see us do, send it our way. If there's something that you uh, want to let us know that maybe you think we should change how we're doing it let us know that too um, that's the stuff we want to hear that's only going to make uh, what we're offering better yeah i'll just say again that at the mys we are not here to be dictators we are here to help facilitate this and we are here to um, steer the ship like we've been saying 
And our job, based on our educational foundation as a 501c3, is to provide solutions and, and promote best practices for all of you. The reason why MYS came to be is because of parent volunteer athletic associations. We are here to serve and protect the winter community base. And in, in the case of our other big sport baseball, uh, spring summer baseball programming. Um, and and that is our, 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 that's our commitment to all of you to make sure that that happens. Okay, moving on. Uh, I know that, again, Jeremy had mentioned this before, admissions for association invitational tournaments. This was discussed in our June kickoff. And Jeremy, you know, made the comment that a lot of associations, and I know there's been a lot of associations that are in certain areas based on reciprocity that they've all kind of go, gone to this no gate fee. Um, you know, I know that it is putting a burden on a lot of small or, or medium sized associations because they're trying to figure out um, what to do with that because they don't want to have to raise the, the fee for individuals because they're trying to keep it as low as possible because even the fee that they are charging, people cannot afford it. And so I think that's going to be the biggest hurdle that we all get through as some people are saying, I'm, I'm going to only play in no gate fee tournaments. Other people are saying I, I have to find as many tournaments that are on site because that alleviates the stress for all of my parents. I mean, one of the things that was discussed uh, and brought up by our steering committee was to maintain the same process that was done during COVID times. And if you do have a tournament, let's say you're running uh, three or four tournaments that are no gate fee, or you have the rest that are, are admission, that during those gate fee weeks that you're having tournaments that you do the same thing where you collect it that week of. So it alleviates the, the, the stress. And I know a lot of the associations want it up front. Um, and there's also the, the thought of the installment plan. But um, I just want everybody to know this is not an... Uh, 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 an MYBA requirement that you have to go no gate fee. This is something that has been determined by uh, many associations that feel that um, it, it obviously lessens the number of volunteers that are needed. And um, it also alleviates the, the stress as you show up at a tournament um, for them. So uh, I, I guess that that's the only thing I'll add about that. Um, we can get into that at the end and, and the last few minutes can maybe be dedicated to that if people have um, uh, some questions or thoughts on that. So uh, next, we are going to be committed to, again, promoting, um, you know, there's been a lot of people talking about making sure people understand the difference between winter community-based youth basketball and the spring summer season. And I think that's important that we all as association leaders help people understand the, the difference. Um, you know, we, we are about uh, development and training. We wanna make sure that we have the community-based feel. So then the, the people that are participating in your programs or the athletes that are playing in your programs eventually um, are going to the high school that you represent for your area um, to maintain that. Um, so from the youth level up to the high school, it's got the community-based feel. In the state of Minnesota, we are way different than a lot of areas of the country where we have this community-based approach still. And I think the reason why you are all a part of your boards is because you want to maintain that. And so we are all here together to continue to do that. All right. So a couple other quick things we'll fly through. Hey, Doc, real my... quick. Yep, real go ahead, quick, Jeremy. Uh, question in the chat about um, what exactly is the... Uh, no gate fee model referring to um, when when a tournament is is classified, I guess, as a, a no gate fee tournament. That basically means that they've um, tacked the admission fee onto the entry fee. So to play in that tournament, you would need to pay a higher entry fee, but none of your parents, um, older siblings of the players. Uh, would need to pay a daily admission fee um, to get into the tournament. So, and as we had mentioned, a lot of the vast majority of the tournaments on our index so far are are going with that no gate fee model, 
or they're charging a higher um, per team entry fee, um, but then there's nobody collecting the five, eight, ten dollars at the door for people to get in. Question. Mm -hmm. Thank you for answering that. Do you know if that means our, our associations then passing that on to parents? You know, we're a smaller association, so it becomes hard for, for us to enter tournaments when they're, you know, 300, 400 bucks because they're covering the gate fee and versus having parents pay that at the gate. So I'm just curious if that, if you've seen that be passed through or increasing to play each sport. Sure. So ultimately, you know, whether you pay up front or if you're paying, you know, $5 here, $8 here, $10 there, whatever it might be, um, you know, it, it, for the most part, it's going to even out. Before, you know, an association that, you know, you're probably looking at, well, do we need to raise our per player mm -hmm. registration fee? Um, that's where you get into uh, the things like Dawson had mentioned with, uh, to help with that, um, you know, maybe setting up an installment plan. Most associations utilize the Sport Engine website right now. Um, and say if you charge $300 uh, for player registration for the season, you can set it up in there in a way maybe to collect uh, $150, you know, up front, $100 at this point in the season, $50 at this point in the season. Break it up to, uh, uh, you know, with that sticker shock or that one-time big fee. Um, also, Dustin mentioned the, uh, you know, last year, everybody had to pay for wristbands and through Venmo or PayPal, you know, people were sending the coach, you know, $10 um, prior to each tournament weekend a lot of times. Um, it was recommended that, you know, the associations could do something like that as well, where if it is a, a no gate fee tournament, um, they could ask the parents to, uh, you know, Venmo their association or have the coach collect, you know, $10 per person on site. Um, they'd be paying that money in admissions anyway, to help alleviate some of those upfront fees. Um, and then as far as a question about average per player registration fees, um, that's a good question. If anybody, uh, if you've got access to the chat or that open on your um, computer while we finish up the rest of the slides here, that'd be very interesting to see if you could um, just list what association you are with and what your player registration fees are. Yeah, we'll get to a couple other, like Toby wants to talk about something here. I'm, I'm going to finish up what we have to, to talk about, and we'll get into this open discussion. Um, again, we know that your time is valuable. Um, so one of the things that is near and dear to my heart is officials, and I know that we all have uh, a thought about them, and for some reason in sports, they get the negative rap all the time. Um, the people that Unfortunately, sometimes people think the, those in black and white stripes are the enemy, and I think we need to shift that mentality. Um, so I know the last meeting that we had, uh, uh, the, some of the association leaders that were on talked about us creating, and we're in the process of doing this, creating promotional materials that you guys can pass along to people inside your community for them to understand the points of entry to become an official. Uh, we are also going to do a big recruitment with high school coaches. We're going to hit up colleges because um, we can't depend on the assigners to find people anymore. We all need to do this together to try to recruit and try to get people into uh, officiating because it's a major problem. Um, in our other sport, we serve baseball. It's a bigger problem with umpiring and, and basketball is not very far behind. I am, 44 years old and I'm still considered young in the high school officiating world. And we need to try to get some people involved uh, that, that, that can help us because a lot of the individuals that have been officiating for a long time are going to retire. And a lot of people have found out that when they don't officiate one year because they decided not to because of COVID, they may not come back. And so we need to try to replenish that supply and roster. So there are going to be a lot of things that we do. You can take advantage of it if you want. You don't have to take advantage of it. If you have somebody inside your community that is an expert or has knowledge of officiating and wants to do their own clinics, that's wonderful. But we're going to provide some opportunities in September and October. We're going to have opportunities through our trusted officials platform 
that you can send all your in-house officials through for a very affordable price. Um, and there are other ways that you could get training and education, but we're going to try to do some events that are going to be available for new and beginning officials that can get some on-court training during the month of October. Um, so that's something that I think we all as a collective Minnesota youth basketball community, we have to focus in on. Now we've heard this before, but if we don't have officials, we don't have games. And it's very important that all of you as association leaders, you really establish that rhetoric inside your association and how important it is that when you're at tournaments and, and when you run your own tournaments, there needs to be an environment established. Because um, if the environment is not established, established and there is people are not responsible for their actions, the conduct will never change. And so I think one of the things that we need to do all as association leaders is zero tolerance when it comes to uh, unsportsmanlike conduct or bad behavior. Because those, those are the individuals that are ruining the opportunity for people to continue to officiate. Um, and I think that that is an important piece. If we don't create the environment, we can't expect that the officials are going to stick around if they are just starting out or if they're new or beginning official. So um, we will get information out to you. We'll provide resources for you so you can at least help people understand what the path of entry is. Um, and, and I think that's got to be something that we focus on as, an M, as the MYBA. Um, we're going to do some uh, Minnesota Youth Basketball Alliance team camps for third and fourth grade teams. So it's going to be at select spots on the North Metro, South Metro, um, that, that teams that are just coming into traveling that they could take advantage of prior to the season. Um, we're going to do a lot of uh, individual uh, opportunities in the fall. So if you don't have a complete team, we would encourage you to look into OurRisingStars.org. Um, again, that's focused on tr just the training and development side in a cost-effective way. We are setting or have set the date for our coaches clinic, which will be October 16th. It'll be in a central location inside the metro area. And right now we are working with members of the Minnesota Black Basketball Coaches Association to, um, to be able to provide that uh, instruction for any coach that wants to attend um, from your association or any association that's part of the MYBA. There will be other things that we'll provide that will help you if you're looking for solutions for player development and parent education. So look for more information with that. If you're looking for assistance and tryout evaluations, let Jeremy or, Jeremy or I know and we can help you with that. Um, and then just a note, we are launching our Gopher State Winter Basketball League. So it is an opportunity for mostly associations that don't have reciprocity. But if there are teams from bigger associations that do have reciprocity, there can be a select number of dates that they can choose from to play in a league concept. So you can have more of your weekend back. You can play your games and be out. Um, and, and you can, if you want to take advantage of that, we are limiting the amount of winter shootouts that we provide because we want to make sure that when we do offer winter shootouts, they're quality. Uh, because there's been times over the last few years where we've had to combine uh, grade levels and it makes for not as competitive an environment. So look for more information related to that. Okay, so that kind of gets through our, our presentation. It's 901, we're past, but I think it's important that we give people the opportunity to kind of um, share questions, comments, uh, feedback. So I'll start with Toby Sackett, STMA Boys Basketball. Toby, you still on? Yeah, I just wanted to comment. Uh, there was a lot of questions about like adding fees for going to no gate fee. I I know our approach has been just to simplify things from a tournament standpoint and looking, breaking down what it costs parents per year. I I. What we decided to is by going to no gate fee and having a higher entry fee for our teams, it kind of in the long run is going to minimize the fallback on parents. I mean, we have a lot of large families out here. So, 
you know, it can be $30 for a family to go for one day. And just by breaking that down and we, and we've looked at only raising our entry fees for our players, families uh, to play by a minimal amount. And it kind of balances out um, just hoping to make more money back with uh, offering good concessions and stuff and minimizing, you know, it's less workers you can devote to that and having better court monitoring and things of that nature to monitor the basketball. It, I think it's a, it's a good program to, to have no gate fee and still manage the costs. And I think if you're kind of presented to the parents that way, um, they're going to look at it the long run, especially if you're playing a lot of tournaments, it kind of balances out the price. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Toby for that comment. I mean, there are other things out there. There's a group that we started working with called forgiving. Um, you have the ability as a team or an individual to be able to raise quickly raise funds through an app to, to be able to uh, get additional funds. If you need an extra fundraiser in, in lieu of doing the, uh, the pizza order form or the fertilizer or whatever else that you may do. Um, that, that would be a quick and efficient way to be able to, to uh, fundraise um, in a different way. And so if anybody's interested in that, I can pass along that information as well. Anybody have anything else that they'd like to bring up? Dawson, do you have any, any additional information on the league that, that you mentioned? Um, yeah, we, it's available on our, uh, I believe it's available on our website, um, the initial information about it. Jeremy, you want to kind of touch on highlights of it? Yeah, um, the locations are going to be in the Twin Cities metro area. Um, there's uh, some flexibility built in with the schedule. Um, I believe it's is it pick four of six dates, Doss? Is that what we're yep, correct. going ahead. to start? Um, yeah, and it's it's basically going to be on Saturdays, and teams will play two games on the Saturdays that they sign up for. Um, it, as Dawson mentioned, a, a way to reduce the, um, you know, be we're not giving out awards every weekend, so we don't uh, have to charge as much. Um, for the teams and and maybe just a more efficient way for especially for the parents to um, you know utilize their time on the weekend. I mean we thought about trying to figure out a way to offer up a weekday opportunity for league play but then that takes away from the practice time we didn't want to do that either but um, uh, I think it's again a way especially focusing on those organizations that have historically participated in our back in the day super savers and our winter shootouts, those smaller to um, medium sized associations that may not have a bunch of reciprocity too. And they're looking for an affordable way to be able to get games in for their participants. So that, I mean, that that's ultimately uh, why we decided it was important. People have said it in surveys, it'd be great if there was a league. Well, I, we're going to provide that opportunity. We'll see if people want to participate in it. We think it's a great concept. We also understand and know full, full well why the tournaments are here because it's an amazing fundraising opportunities. And it's been that way in the state for about 20 to 25 years. Um, I mean, believe it or not, 30 years ago, the only thing that was out there was league play um, when we first started at MYS. Um, and we know that this is a great opportunity for all the tournaments to have a fundraising mechanism through the tournaments that they administer. And we're, we, we're, we don't want to do anything to take that away. Um, we just need to figure out a way to balance that uh, gameplay with development and training too, because we all understand and know that that's got to shift, but we don't know what to do. None of us know what to do because we also know that the way that you guys make have your fundraising opportunity is through the tournament. So there's that fine line and balance not to eliminate that, obviously, but to maybe sprinkle in some other ways to get games in and, and continue to promote the training part. Anything else? Any other questions? I see a question um, on the chat about how many tournaments are currently posted on the index. I I think we're at about 60 tournaments on there. And um, 
you know, this, don't quote me on this, but I think around uh, maybe a little over 40 of them, if there is 60, have identified that uh, they're going to do the no gate fee model. All right, feel free if anybody has anything else they'd like to bring up. Again, um, we yearn for your feedback because if we don't hear from any of you, we don't know how you're feeling or what your association's feeling. So please, if, if I mean, if you don't say anything tonight and you have something that you need to bring up or you want to know about, please email us. Is there something that you did not hear tonight that you thought you would? Go ahead, Greg. Nope. I'm just going to ask about the feasibility of doing a uh, survey similar to the officiating one uh, on the tournament cost. I know people are posting it, but the truck for someone to try and do a quick review and look at what's going on. Uh, and fees can mean something different to association number of tournaments, number of practices, whether there's a uniform included in it or not, that kind of thing. If that's the feasibility. I mean, I think that's that's very possible to do. It's a matter of people want to participate in the survey. I mean, that, that's ultimately the big thing that I, I think that it'd be awesome. And I hope that we get a lot of people that want to participate in it because I think it's very important for everybody to understand that because um, we want to make sure that we – go ahead. Go ahead, Greg. Oh, no, I didn't have anything. Okay. It might have been my chair squeaking. Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't, I, we, I think we want to try to stay as consistent as possible. And I think you all are doing your best because you don't necessarily know what the other associations are doing either. And I think that's the biggest part because we understand there's different dynamics inside of each association too. So Greg, we will do that. We'll make sure to get something out. You know, there was another request in the chat as well. So um, part of the survey, and I'm not sure my organ, I did a uh, kind of a self survey a year, few years ago. How many associations have paid coaches, particularly at the higher 8th, 7th, 8th grade A level would be part of the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I may, I may uh, email some of you guys, uh, some of you ladies and gentlemen and lean on you for some I guess main ideas behind that to make sure that we get the correct questions out there that people are answering. So Uh, Dawson, I got yeah, I got one other thing um, with the, <clears throat> the possibility of using the online registration for your own individual tournaments. Um, I guess the question that came up at ours is the fact that our tournaments like mid February, and so if that registration starts and heads to you, then we have we don't have any access to that until after that tournament, or would that be something? I think you had mentioned earlier that you would, when the tournament was over, then you guys would cut the check to the association. Does that sound correct? Yeah, well, we, and, and that's something that we're going to continue to look into. But Jesse, for this year, I think the thing that we ended up on is that because the teams will not be properly identified until on or around November 1 for everybody, it's impossible for that, for people to be able to utilize the registration um, through us because they, I mean, Jeremy, you want to touch on what your thoughts are on that as well? Yeah, I, I know in some previous meetings, um, we discussed with the MYBA uh, bracketing platform of allowing or having an online registration feature um, attached to that, um, where teams from Association A could register online and pay with a credit card uh, for Association B's tournament. Um, we're most, as Dawson mentioned, we're most likely going to scrap that, at least for this year, um, just because he had mentioned, you know, the most of the associations are probably 100% of them. All their team accounts in their uh, portal right now are from, have last year's coaches, last year's players on it. And we'd probably just end up with a big mess with the wrong teams getting entered into the wrong divisions um, if we opened up that right now. So as an alternative, what we'd recommend, um, you know, I know through Sport Engine, you know, you could set up a, a registration through there. 
um, or whatever platform you're using um, and then accept uh, teams that way uh, with strongly encouraging them to properly identify those teams. Um, so we make sure we get the right uh, team names in the correct divisions. And I think the other thing to add on to that is that, you know, we had talked about team identification and tournament director, members of your board, making sure that they um, have all the teams properly identified. I think, again, this is kind of something that all of us can look at. I know, I know it takes a lot, um, you know, the parent volunteer as the tournament director, trying to get the teams in, trying to organize them. And then they have to do another step of making sure they're properly identified. I think, again, through the MYBA bracketing platform, that's going to be something that's going to be very efficient. If you're going to utilize a different bracketing platform, we're going to get be able to get you that information and we will attempt to work with Tourney Machine at least to try to make sure that that is something that can happen. But we want to strongly encourage everybody to properly identify the teams as they come in. So if they register as Chaska 5B, we want to make sure that we know how they are actually properly identified. And if you need to reach out to us, reach out to Jeremy, myself, anybody else in the basketball staff, we can help you with that as well. Because I think by, Jeremy, what, November 1st, we will be able to have all that stuff that could be available for the most part from the majority of the associations on all of their teams. Correct. Yep. Uh, quick question, uh, this is Matt, OMGBA. Um, is there a page on your website that kind of outlines the, the naming policy? Yep, yeah, if you go to our website, mys.org, click on basketball. Uh, we've got all the different sports across the top of the page. Click on basketball. On that next page towards the top, you'll see a link for Minnesota Youth Basketball Alliance. Um, click on that. And then on the MYBA page, there's a tab titled Team Identification. And it's got that structure listed right there. Thank you. Yeah, Toby, Toby brought up a good thought. Um, and I actually, I signed MYAS with a you know business account through Venmo. And I know that's another option that you guys could utilize if you want, if you feel comfortable with that, um, that you can feed tournament entries through your um, association Venmo account if you want to establish that. Maybe you already have um, that. That's a that's an option because they do have a business version of that now. All right. Uh, anybody have anything else? All right, well, I, I hope that this was um, informative for you. Again, if we did not answer your question, please feel free to uh, get a hold of us. Um, we, have, we have some uh, uh, things that we need to work on to be able to get out to you to make sure that you guys can get some more information that you all need. Um, please note that on July 29th at 8 p.m., we'll have a separate forum for coach player development directors. Um, and kind of a sharing of uh, best practices, uh, the training uh, for coaches and, and players inside your association. So we can kind of get um, people together that are doing that position. And we're going to try to have some people that can maybe help provide some thoughts um, and ideas for all of the coach player development directors. Um, so again, we'll send more information on about that, but that'll be July 29th. And again, look for more information from, from myself, from Jeremy, from others. Uh, as we uh, get, you know, move towards the season, we're going to continue to feed you all information. We hope that you read the novels that I write, for example. Um, but I, I, there's a lot of great information that we're going to continue to pass along. Um, and I, we're, we're getting through the end of our summer season, our baseball program. We have some of our big Gulf State Tournament champions coming up the next few weeks. And it's been a very busy summer, but we're excited to get closer and closer to the youth basketball season and get into that fall time where through our updates and enhancements we made for our fall basketball programming, we have this uh, Harvest Hoops Fest tournament. We've got this really, really cheap option for a fall kickoff for 140 bucks to get some games in. Um, again, we're trying to provide some cost-effective solutions for all of you. So 
Thank you so much for your time and dedication to youth basketball. And we're excited to see all of you on the call. Please, again, get stuff updated within your portal. Get new contacts that need to be a part of it um, so we can effectively communicate with everybody. So thank you so much and have a great rest of your evening.